We ain't backing down. Spider two wide banana. The line slides to the left. Watch the young back cut down the defensive end, but there's a beautiful banana. There's three quarterbacks in this football team. Whichever one starts, starts. Whichever one don't, will back them out. Period. Cut and dry. Next. Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Welcome to the TW Podcast. Uh, today uh, is Thursday, April 16th. You guys will get this dropped on you on Friday the 17th. Uh, this is day number uh, infinity and eight uh, of the quarantine. Uh, I have been locked up in my home for uh, what feels to be six years. I am told that it's two weeks and like five days. Um, you know, it is... Uh, it's getting to the point where uh, I, I might be losing my mind a little bit. Uh, I, I'm sitting here uh, working every day from uh, what I would call my podcast studio here, uh, which is the second bedroom of my house, um, which is, uh, it's a nice little space to be in. Uh, I don't think I enjoy it for uh, the length of time I've been in here, but uh, working out of here, doing all my recruiting phone calls, recruiting emails, uh, solving uh, issues and problems for the program uh, from a remote location, not right on campus. Uh, but, uh, you know, and in that, in my downtimes, I'm watching uh, a lot of uh, shows and movies and watching stuff. I watched a movie the other day on Amazon Prime, and I'm not going to drop the name of it, but it was the uh, dumbest movie I've ever seen in my life. Um, I do feel dumber for the fact that I finished the movie. I, I didn't just stop and say, I'm not going to watch it. I went all the way through. Uh, sometimes that's a problem with me. I have to finish things. It drives me nuts when I don't. Um, so, you know, that's, uh, that's, that, that's, that's where we're at here in this quarantine at this point. Um, you know, I have, uh, other than that, uh, spending time with my wife, which has been glorious. Um, you know, making dinners. I'm doing a lot of grilling. Even though it's cold and a little snow out there, I'm, I'm still grilling. Grilled the ham for Easter. Um, uh, I, I smoked the ham. It's it was delicious. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you can see the picture of it. Uh, it was rather nice. Uh, but today, uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the XFL, how I feel about the XFL, uh, and then later on the podcast, we'll talk about uh, my Madden league that I started. And uh, the first year is complete. Uh, we'll have the uh, the winner of the Super Bowl on with on the podcast today. Uh, it should be a good episode. Uh, I'm sure there will be some uh, some good laughter, some some good jokes of the other teams uh, that we played against this year. Um, but uh, the first season's over. We're on to season two in the Madden League, uh, and we're going to find out uh, you know what teams can make the jump. But we'll get more into that later, as well as we'll have the Netflix movie of the week, as well as we're going to get into three and out. Uh, but you know, let's get started. All right, I want to talk about the XFL. All right. I thought the XFL was great. All right. I thought it was, I thought it was something we needed uh, during a time where we don't have football. Um, you know, seeing that it filed for Chapter 9 bankruptcy last week, or I think it was Chapter 11, whatever chapter it was, uh, I think it was rather upsetting to me, uh, and as I would assume a lot of other people. I mean, this was this was a league that was it started uh, back in two thousand uh, to a very uh, different format at that time. You know, where they had wrestlers kind of promoting the thing with the WWE tie-in and uh, Vince McMahon, but now it's more of a uh, it was something different this time. It was more based for football people. It wasn't just made for, you know, I'm, I'm a pro wrestling fan and a football fan. Uh, I love the XFL, and I love the things they did. If you'd ever seen the 30 for 30 on the XFL, I think you should go find time and go watch that. I think you could see how uh, the original XFL uh, gave a lot of uh, things that the game of, uh, you know, the NFL game now uses. I think that's a very good thing to go look at. Now, they did get rid of the scramble, which I thought the scramble was the greatest thing they had going, uh, where at the start of the game, basically, uh, who instead of a coin flip, we are going to see who could run in there, uh, smash each other up really good, and uh, see who's going to get the ball first. 
that turned out to not be very good. I heard there's a lot of injuries on the uh, on the old scramble, uh, but I thought it was always good back in the day. They didn't do the scramble as the new XFL came out, but um, you know the XFL has folded, as they said. I hope it's not a true fold. All right, I don't want to see the league just go completely gone. All right, I'd like to see the league make its way back into you know next spring, next winter, uh, really come back at a full rate. From what I, you know, what I was reading was, um, I mean, they lost tens of millions of dollars uh, of lost revenue due to the COVID-19, which, I mean, everybody's feeling that. They're not the only people who feel that, but um, they still paid their salaries to coaches and players and other league officials all the way up till uh, April 12th, in which they basically, you know, there's no money coming in. There is no uh, TV money. There is no ticket revenue there is no concession revenue there is no you know maybe their online store is doing very well i know in the beginning their online store i went on there and tried i was i was rooting for the new york guardians man you know i was hoping to buy myself a guardian shirt and the first day i went on there all of a sudden everything was sold out uh, i mean that was the first thing they did and they sold out on everything um, but you know watching the xfl for the four to five weeks maybe six weeks that it actually ran I really enjoyed it. You know, it's it's during a time where you don't get football. Um, you know, we had the AFL one time, which was not even close to being uh, like a regular football game. It was a, it's a competitive game, but it's very different. The NFL uh, is the king of the castle here, all right? But the XFL was going to do something, you know, hold football over for longer. And I never thought, you know, there's people who thought maybe the XFL would be a feeder system for the NFL, which they already got, uh, you know, uh, the Big Ten, the SEC, the ACC. I'm pretty sure they didn't need another revenue. I mean, it might give some other guys uh, a look into the league, but I didn't think it was going to get them uh, uh, all of a sudden we need to have this guy because he was having success in the XFL, and I didn't see that. You know, I saw some guys have signed uh, some small guaranteed money to – uh, have their at least try out and do some things, but um, you know the XFL, it was it was hot. I mean, the first week it was unbelievable. Games were competitive. It looked like real football. It wasn't uh, it wasn't a mockery of the game. You know there was there was competitiveness. There was uh, looks of uh, could be some stars in that league. And then week two came and kind of put it down on reality well, as soon as everybody had a week to prepare to see what everybody was going to do. Uh, the coaching kind of took over and you saw that the games became a little less uh, competitive because all of a sudden certain teams can only do certain things. Coaches pick up on that. They're going to defend it or they're going to attack it. And we saw that in the, that week two, um, you know, going into week three, things are still, I mean, as a Guardians fan, Things were things were riding off the boat by week four, or I mean the quarterback situation. I mean we might have the first time in human history where the quarterback uh, basically threw everybody, the entire organization, including the coaching staff, under the bus in a in a halftime speech, <laughs> just like, yeah, we don't know what we're doing. We just we need to go. Figure, we got to change the entire game plan. In which, as a coach, if I would have heard that. I would have uh, I would have saw red and I, you know I probably would have did what you would call a blackout probably not know what I said to that person uh, and they probably wouldn't be playing in the second half because they don't understand or respect uh, the idea of what you what game plan you put forward but you know not everything's going to according to plan sometimes you got to make some uh, changes at half and do those things but you don't just uh, abandon your whole game plan and your offense of what you do um, so. But, I mean, that was riveting. That was riveting entertainment. Like, I couldn't believe it. You could hear a quarterback talk openly about that. I mean, I, I thought it was weird. I know as a coach, you know, you sit there and you watch a couple things and you're like, man, how would I feel if uh, if, if I had a, a reporter standing next to me and asking me my questions or asking me questions during play? Like, no thanks. Like, I... I got, I got something going on here. Uh, I, I think it's a little bit more important than talking to you. Sorry, not sorry. But, you know, that's where they really just were like, hey, why don't you just sit here and do this? And that's what they did. 
um, you know, asked him questions, and sometimes the questions didn't even deserve an answer. It was like, yeah, uh, no shit, okay? Yeah, we're, we're going to get the defense figured out here in the next uh, three snaps. So, I mean, those are the things that just kind of made me roll my eyes at those interviews and those kind of things. But then you look at the things that, you know, even, you know, on player safety in general. I mean, we looked at a kickoff that was vastly different than anything we've seen before and really kind of going out on the edge and trying to do something different, um, you know, watching them, um, their kickoff rule, putting everybody basically on the 20, and that's where your kick return team is, and then the other team's on, you know, 10 yards across from them, and you're taking away a serious impact where you had guys running full speed at each other 20, 20 yards away. Those guys are dropping back, turning their backs to the play, and you have a guy coming full board trying to rock your clock, all right? They took that part out of the game. Now, the returns weren't exactly huge. I mean, I think there was one kickoff return in those six weeks that went all the way back because if one guy screws up on that wall, it can happen that way. But, uh, you know, it's set up to make sure that uh, that ball is going to be taken on the 20 or it will only make it, you know, it'll make it to the 20 or you just fair catch it in the end zone and it's going to be put on the 25. You know, those are the things uh, that looking into player safety, I think uh, the NFL's probably looked at it. They probably, you know, they weren't going to try it themselves unless it was in preseason. And they saw they have a bunch of footage now that they can watch and see if that's something that for the safety of the game is a good idea. I think um, I think the NCAA should look at it. I, You know, my personal feeling on it, I think it's a good idea, but I think it also takes away the odds of a return pretty well. Or, uh, you know, you're not going to have a lot of guys um, – you know, half the time, a lot of us college coaches, you don't have a strong kicker all the time. You're trying to put it, you know, in that back corner and try to pin this kick and make that guy have to only have one or two directions to go to slow him down or tackle him there. Um, you know, you'll kind of take that out. You're just looking to get a fair catch out there and get it out of the 25. But, you know, I think it, it could be something to look at. Uh, as a safety standpoint, I think it would be a good idea. Um, but I don't know. We'll see how that goes, you know. Um, you know, that was always uh, that was unique. I, I think the NFL should adopt this. Um, but every penalty that happened was checked. Or if there was a touchdown scoring play or an interception or anything, they brought you into the booth. Now, sometimes the things that were being said, you're just sitting there like, what are these guys talking about? But you get a full understanding of what the officials are looking for, and they're watching the video, they're conversing, and they're conversing with the officials down on the field, you get the idea of yardage and distance and time on the clock and all these things that I think a lot of people don't understand how much goes into that. Um, but it kind of gives you an explanation of why they're calling the penalty and why they think that way instead of just your interpretations and sitting there going, well, that's not fair. That was pass interference. You know, I... I get sick of hearing stuff like that, like pass interference. Yeah, it happens all the time. I mean, uh, you know, I'm an offensive line coach. I hear uh, I hear more D-line coaches out in the world saying my guys were held and blah, blah, blah. Well, there's holding on every single college play. Like, you teach offensive linemen to aim for that this chest plate, and if you grab it, you grab it, all right? And that's not considered holding. Holding is whenever you're outstretched and you're still grabbing onto somebody. That is holding. So, uh, and I think it's only a point of the attack, well, you know, deal. I don't think if somebody was holding on the backside, that should be uh, a massive penalty. And now I know all the defensive coaches out there will tell me that I'm wrong. The guy who would never make the play getting held, uh, that's, a, that, that's a penalty. Um, but I even think holding, uh, being a 10-yard penalty is a little extreme. I mean, that, that's... <laughs> I still think, you know, face masks or 15-yard personal fouls now. Like, yeah, that's a safety standpoint. But, I, I mean, I don't get into rules and regulations of the game that I really didn't want to get into. But, um, you know, let's get back on the XFL, you know. It was a league that was going to work. It was – it probably wasn't going to make uh, a whole lot of money, but it was going to make money nonetheless to make it a, a, a profitable company for – Vince McMahon and what he wanted to do, I think he saw a value in football. I think he, I think he really wants to be in the football game. Like I think he views football as a very top uh, sport in the world that everybody loves and respects. And 
wants to have his own little spin on it, not just what the NFL puts out there. And, you know, I think I really hope that they decide to come back next year. You know, I think it would be a very good uh, situation for them to come back. I think people would still like them. I understand shutting down right now and having, you know, file for bankruptcy. Like, everybody's feeling this thing right now. And something that's just new, you know, I hope this isn't the RIP forever. I hope that they can find people that are willing to find, you know, that showed as a profitable entity in the first couple weeks. You know, if he could find other people that are willing to spend the money, um, maybe even, uh, you know, manage a team or buy a team kind of deal, kind of like the NFL does where, you know, they're handling everything. You know, the fact that Vince McMahon was handling basically all the teams and he had to make sure all the teams were getting paid. He had to make sure the coaches were getting paid. All those kind of things make it kind of difficult. Uh, when you're talking about, um, you know, usually just an owner is responsible for all that of, you know, in the NFL, 32 different franchises. So, you know, I I really think the XFL was good this year. I, I really hope they bring it back. Again, I can't even say how many times I'm going to say that in this podcast. But, you know, that's just – this is this is something that uh, is needed. Uh, I think it's another opportunity for uh, players to keep playing football. Um you know, it's not, I don't think it's a direct path to the NFL, but it gives you something else for those guys who uh, want to continue playing that, you know, the AFL's gone now, no more arena football league. That's the whole revenue of guys that don't play anymore. Um, the CFL, which, um, you know, they only take in certain amount of international players into the Canadian league. So, I mean, that's another avenue for these guys that are playing college football to still have an opportunity to prove uh, themselves to get themselves to an elevated level, maybe play a higher level. Um, you know, that's it was good all the way around. Um, and I think they did some innovative things this uh, last season. And even though it was cut short, I do believe that uh, it was anybody's league too. That's, that's, that's the thing about it. Like there was no dominant team in the league. Like they said it was the Battle Hawks, and all of a sudden the Battle Hawks lost. And then – you watch the Washington, D.C. team, and you're like, this team is great. And then the next week, they get beat by L.A., who were, at that point, like, haven't won a game. It was like, okay, like, this is anybody's league. Like, it's not, uh, you know, the Guardians. They were they started, like, one and one, and were, like, one and three, and then won a game. And I was like, well, wow, you know, and like, they ain't just tanking. This is going to be good. Um, you know, it's a shame that, you know, COVID-19 is uh, – taken the country uh, to this point where we've lost a lot of things. Um, you know, we still don't know the repercussions for uh, coming down the line. So, um, but that's kind of my take on the XFL. You know, I'm really pulling for it. I hope it stays. I hope we get more of it. You know, the extreme football league. I hope we get more of it, man. I just loved it. Loved every minute of it. Enjoyed watching the games. Hope they bring it back. All right. We got the FU support group Super Bowl champion joining us today, Ethan Sharon. Ethan, welcome to the TW Podcast. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Now, uh, Ethan and I have a few things in common. Uh, we graduated from Escanaba High School. If you got the video, you got the E in the back and the helmet, in which yep. we also played high school football together. So, uh, big, big kudos to us 2007 grads out there. Yep, yep, absolutely. I'd love to see that helmet and the and the symbol underneath. That's great. Yeah, got it as a gift. So very good. All right. How does it feel to be the Super Bowl champion of the uh the inaugural FU support group? Honestly, I would probably put it as a top three moment in my life. <laughs> um possibly top two, but for sure top three moment in my life. Um it feels great. Uh, the way the Super Bowl finished, the, the kind of game it ended up being, instant classic. There's no question. Um, yeah, so I, I'm just – I'm on cloud nine right now. Let's, let's just talk about that game quickly. You were having a commanding, strong start. And yes. there, was, there was no question in my mind as I watched it via Twitch. I was like, no, there's no way – there's no way E-Man's going to lose this game. Like, there's no shot. Mm -hmm. And – all of a sudden, second half came, and mm. the Steelers came running up until yes. they tied it. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> like, 
this is the kind of game you expect the Super Bowl to be. At first, it looked like a runway, but tell us, tell us what the game plan was. Yeah, so like you said, the first half, my plan was going to a T. Um, perfect. Um, I, I played against this guy in the regular season. I knew he was a good player. Um, like to run the ball, which is also what I do, primarily run the ball. Um, once the second half started, I made a couple little mistakes, and that kind of snowballed next to next, and all of a sudden it was like a two-score game before I knew it. And I got to give him props, uh, David, the Steelers, because he took advantage of every opening that he got at the end. And even, even at the very end of the game, I think there was three seconds left, he was down eight, so he needed to score on his last play and get the two-point conversion, and he did that. So props to him. Um, I don't know how I got lucky and got that interception in overtime because he was about to score and the game was over. So right. That's where um, it was like if Ethan loses this game, he's going to be so pissed off. Cause they, <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, when it went into overtime and then we had to go to extra, some extra time, I was like, oh, man. I didn't know exactly how Madden was going to roll. Like, I didn't know it was like the start of a new quarter and you started with the ball already and where you were. Right. Well, hot yeah, if the, if the Patriots hadn't went to overtime in that Super Bowl a few years ago, right. that's the only reason I knew that the rules were similar or the same. Because if not, then I would have just assumed that it was going to play out a full quarter or whatnot. But right. I knew that if he scored a touchdown on that first drive, he won. So – he drove right down the field on me, no problem. Somehow I made a good play call at the end and, and got an interception, and that saved it for me. So You are the screen champion of the world. I think <laughs> when I watched the game, I saw two screens in which whenever I run a screen on the game, I like there's some D lineman that just hawks me, and I just get pissed. So yeah. I don't run screens very often unless I really need to or I'm just trying to get you know run some clock or do something stupid. But yeah. It's it's a it's a tough thing. It's very uh it's a very fickle play because if they happen to be in man coverage, usually it's either going to get intercepted or your guy's going to get jacked up right away Correct. if he catches it. So, and that's, the couple of times I ran it, I got lucky and I think I got some good good gains out of it. Maybe one of them went for a touchdown. Um, but yeah, I I definitely don't try and run that play exclusively because, like you said, it can it can blow up in your face. Yeah. <laughs> It depends what team you're playing. I mean, if they got a guy that they don't need to blitz to get a pass rush, like screen game isn't even fun. Like you play right. top loading the Packers, it's it's not fun. The, the right. part about this league, I, I want to talk about my specific team, the New York Jets in this league. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to play hardly any of the NFC teams that everybody – like I didn't get – I didn't have to play the Cardinals. I didn't have to play the Green Bay Packers. And if I would have – probably wouldn't have done well you know I, I was matched up on the AFC side which there's some good players in the AFC side but I mean I played David the Steelers were in the Super Bowl they're pretty good he was yeah. like he makes Saquon Barkley do things like I was like Dude, this guy can't even be tackled like this is just stupid right right yeah <laughs> when I saw the stuff that Saquon was doing I was like okay this is a video game right now because exactly right. This, this is just unreal. This stuff that's happening right now. I mean, I might as well just let him go right past me, but I, I was able to contain him at least for the first half. So that was a moral victory right there. But. I mean, I know you're a Packers fan with the hat. Mm. The NFC championship game. How difficult was it to have to, to play? Cause we drafted teams, but Aaron Rodgers is still the quarterback of that green Bay Packers football team. I mean, mm -hmm. It had to take it some effect, especially when it's against Kyle. Yes. Well, you see, that that was kind of the, the nice thing for me, actually, is because Kyle being a good friend of mine, I played him in the NFC Championship, like you just mentioned, and I said, I would told Joe um, that this is kind of win-win for me because if I win, I'm going to the Super Bowl. If I lose, Kyle's going to the Super Bowl, and I get to watch the Packers hopefully win. Of course, I wouldn't be as good as myself being there, but – if I had to have somebody else do it, of course, I'm going to want Green Bay. So Now, yeah. who, who do you think are the top three players in the league? I, since you won, you get to be at the top of the pedestal. You only get to pick two. Ethan, okay. you're the best player in the league. <laughs> I mean, you even had to retire at the end, but we'll get into that later. But, <laughs> who, 
Who are the other um, best teams? Well, see, I haven't played against you, so it's tough for me to say. <laughs> Don't try to kiss my ass and think that I was very good. Because I am your record was good. Well, I played a lot of the computer. <laughs> <laughs> that might have helped was a little awful bit. Awful nice to me. I have there's <laughs> one other person in my division. I basically have two guaranteed games. Now I know this season I looked up ahead. You know, the Cardinals were on the docket, and I've never been happier to see that you decided to get in retirement. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I got, like, maybe five games against the computer this year, and I'm like, oh, man, I might be one of the bottom dwellers, like the Detroit Lions or the San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be those teams. Um, <laughs> well, you know what? I got to say Kyle. I mean, he's he's a good player. He – well, how many touchdowns did Aaron Rodgers have? Seventy thousand. Yeah, it, it might have. It might as well have been seventy thousand. Um, it it was ridiculous. I know he broke the touchdown record, the passing yards record. I think he threw two interceptions, which that's realistic to Aaron in real life. That part of it. Um, the sixty-six or seventy touchdowns, maybe not that, but um, Kyle definitely I'd put up there. I played against him, so I know. Um, and then I would probably have to say David. Um, the Steelers, who I played in the Super Bowl, he he plays a lot of similar similar ways that I do as far as running the ball exclusively, um, and he he just knows those good plays that usually are gonna go for good yards. So I would probably say Kyle and and David. Okay, now here's not who's the two worst teams in the league. Now, <laughs> oh no! Now you can only speak to who you've played, so I can't make the list. That's the best part. But who you played, who was the easiest to beat? Well, uh, fellows, I apologize in advance. Um, I'd probably have to say the 49ers. Oh, um, oh, yeah. I think the combined score of our two games was 130 to, let's say, 14. <laughs> um, <laughs> and other than that, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go with an NFC North team that's a rival of mine in real life, and I'm gonna say the Vikings, <laughs> awful team. No, no other explanation. Just awful team. <laughs> Man, I, I really thoroughly enjoyed the league. You know what? What's the retirement? You, just time commitment. You can't can't commit to the time or what? Pretty much. Yeah. It's. Uh, it, it, it's especially because of the way the league is moving along really nicely, which I, I enjoyed that, you know, we right. got a game in every couple of days or sometimes every day, but I'm still working right now. Um, me and Joe Callio, I know, you know, Joe, well, um, that's who I'm working with. And we are on the road working still ever since this whole Corona thing blew up. Um, so right now we're in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, which is literally like, less than a hundred miles away from New York city ground zero of this. Right. Um, and New Jersey is literally right next to us too. So, um, we're, we're trying to work and get done basically so that we can get, get the hell out of here. Um, <laughs> um, and then hopefully go either back home to Michigan or to wherever the next job is. That's not like right here in the hot zone. Um, so that, that's definitely the biggest reason. Um, I've, you didn't retire on the game yet. Did you? I actually have not retired on the game yet, so no. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put you on autopilot until okay. you can pick the sticks back up. Hopefully okay. Hopefully pass, I think, week six, because I think that's when we play. Hopefully <laughs> your team is at, like, 0-8 oh or whatever it is by the time you get back. Uh, so, like, I, I at least be like, well, he's going to either go, you know, 8-8 eight and eight and barely make the playoffs or something will go down here. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, the best part of the playoffs this year was – Every team in the playoffs was actual people. I mean, there's – I think there's 18 or 19 people in the league. Yep. So, I mean, kudos to all of us that made the playoffs. I, I had the easiest way. I, I don't – my Madden skills are – uh, I don't think they've gotten better since 2007. <laughs> they've, they've been about the same. I used probably the same uh, 10 to 12 plays. And you're, you're, you're going back to Andy Jensen's basement days. That's too. correct. And, you okay. know, Andy Jensen doesn't even play Madden anymore. So, no, because I invited him to the league and he was like, ah, you know, I don't really play Madden anymore. Yeah. 
wow. Pretty weak. Yep. <laughs> just just classic stuff, you know, like oh man. Going back well, to his basement. Now you gotta talk about Mike Dewar's dad's hot wings, man. I mean, just the best things in the world. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those those haven't been brought up in, in too long. Yes. Oh, nostalgic memory for yeah. sure. <laughs> they really go hand in hand, Super Bowl parties. Um oh, God. Pizza Hut, uh super blank. <laughs> Awesome pizza. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The greatest pizza ever made. That's fat. Yes, that's fat. Just, just classic times, man. Uh, but, I know. I mean, other than uh, kicking everybody's ass in the Madden League, you know, what, what you've been up to? Yeah. Um, so mostly just this new job has been keeping me busy. Uh, I started it March 9th, literally right when, like, the corona started blowing up. Um, and I had just flown down to Oklahoma. Okay. Uh, first, I was in Norman, Oklahoma, where University of Oklahoma is. Yeah. And I was all excited. I'm like, oh, I'm a single guy. I'm going to be in this college town, you know, experience all this new stuff. And then they start giving the stay at home orders. So it's like, all right, well, no, we can't do anything other than work. But <laughs> so that kind of put a damper on that part of it. But I've still been enjoying it, you know, traveling. And um, I work with Joe. So it's nice. I'm not just like a alone in a strange town you know i got a buddy here too so well sometimes being with joe or being alone alone is even better than being with <laughs> yeah i'll tell him that you and know. i agree <laughs> but yeah well, all right man it was good catching up with you um but i uh, appreciate you coming on the podcast to uh i try to get you some hard questions to see if you would say some bad things about some people in the league <laughs> uh, as well as gloat a little bit so but thanks for taking the time to come on here with me, all right? Yeah. Um, and, and before I do sign off, um, first of all, I want to give props to you for creating the league because it kind of surprised me how actually how cool the whole thing was. Um, I Obviously, I played Madden before, but that franchise, you know, especially during this quarantine, gives us all some sports and some camaraderie, and you were the one that created it, so props to you for that. And um, – Hopefully, maybe sometime in the future, you know, bring me back on and we'll talk some sports when that'll get going again. Hey, man, I'm all up for that. I have no problem. You know, I plan on getting some uh, some people on the podcast because it's a lot more fun uh, to talk to people than to sit here and just talk to myself in the computer. So, <laughs> right. Um, but thanks for, uh, you know, the, the pat on the back and appreciate you coming on. You bet, man. All right, brother. All right, let's start wrapping up the podcast. Um, you know, let's start with doing the Netflix movie of the week. Uh, this week I chose Raiders of the Lost Ark. It is the Indiana Jones that started it all. All right, if you are not an Indiana Jones fan, I don't know what the hell's wrong with you, but make sure you get to watch this movie. I think it's one of the best. Uh, you know, it seems like every week I say, hey, man, this movie's like in my top five. Uh, this is another movie I say is at least in my top ten somewhere in there. Uh, loved it as a child, loved it as an adult, uh, phenomenal movie. Um, it takes place with Indiana Jones, who is uh, an archaeologist, who is going to find the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, action ensues, there's Nazis in it, there's a lot of uh, crazy happenings. Uh, Indiana Jones gets himself into some uh, problems throughout the movie, and uh, it's very good. If you have not seen it, you need to go see it. Uh, it's on Netflix. It's got all the Indiana Jones on Netflix. If you want to watch one, you're probably going to end up watching at least the first three. If you want to get in the fourth one, that's on you, and I'm not going to go into uh, telling you about that one. I'm not very interested in it. All right? All right, let's move to three and out. All right? First down. All right? These NFL decade teams, all decade teams, I hate them. Like, I, I dislike them. I was talking with a friend of mine, Andy, Andy Phillips, uh, about a week ago. And I was sitting there, we're in the 2010s, I go, where is Nick Mangold on this list? Why is he not on this decade list? Uh, And, you know, he brought up the reason of the problem with these players playing two different eras, right? So, you know, he got drafted in 2007 or 8, I believe. I would say his best years, he made Pro Bowl like three or four years in a row, was the first four years of his career. He was a two-time All-Pro so he doesn't make it into the 2000s to 2010 uh, all-decade team. And then 
all of a sudden it's like they forgot about his career his last six you know five to six years in the league in 2010 he I mean, they put Marquise Pouncey on there before him. I mean, that that blows my mind because I think Nick Mango was one of the better centers to play the game. Not saying he's the best. I say he's up there, one of my favorite players. Um, you know, give him a why, but he was the next best thing to me. I thought he was a great football player. I don't like uh, – you got to take these things with a grain of salt, as, as Andy told me I had to because uh, otherwise I was going to get too upset because I think Nick Mango deserves to be on that list. He should be on that list. Definitely above Marquise Pouncey. I think he was a way better player than that guy is. Um, but hey, moving on. Second down. All right. New episode of Tiger King. I have not watched it yet, but it is dropped on Netflix. Uh, I have no ideas or anything of what it could be about. I am going to watch it uh, at some point, and maybe I'll give you a little uh, refresher course on the Tiger King, but get ready for that. All right. Third down. We got snow in April, all right? I am not exactly thrilled about getting snow in April. I had to go shovel the driveway in April. Um, I didn't have any snow in my yard. It was all melted, and then got, boom, here's six inches for you, all right? Don't like it, but, hey, when you live in this region, you're going to get some snow. Got to understand it all. It's okay, but I uh, appreciate you guys watching the show today, uh, watching or listening, whatever you're, uh, whether you're on the YouTube or you are listening to it on a podcast form. Uh, appreciate you guys listening. Uh, hope everybody's families are doing safe. And uh, I'll catch you guys next week. All right, have a good one.